Casino Design Secrets Exposed. Before we begin this video, I would like to invite you to our site, casinoglow.com, especially to our new page dedicated to the newest and hottest casino games today and why you should play them. See the links to those pages in the description section below this video. On our site, we offer you amazing bonuses and promotions within just for you. From deposit bonuses to free cash, welcome bonuses and much more. If you enjoy our video, please like and subscribe to support our channel. And hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new videos to the channel. Enjoy the video. In this video, I talk about Casino's layout designs and how they draw you to play and spend more money. I cover everything from Casino's designs back in the 70s to current designs, how they came up with it, psychology behind the designs, why the slots and table games are the way they are today, and why can't you find your way out of the games room and must play even more. Let's begin. Why are casinos designed the way they are? Have you ever wondered why casinos are designed the way they are? Have you ever felt you're stepping into a maze the moment you get your foot inside a casino? Flashing slot machines, blackjack tables, loud crafts players, and cocktail waitresses. You're flooded of all directions. Are you confused and scared? Are you excited and ready to pull out your wallet and gamble? The way these casinos are designed has become a topic of significant interest and many of the classic theories about how casinos should be laid out have recently come under significant scrutiny. The result is that casino layout theory is evolving, with the goal of encouraging more gambling while ensuring everyone has more fun. Design for the masses Casinos are designed to fit many people because the more the merrier and more money on the floor. It is built to serve the needs of thousands of visitors every day from newcomers who have never dropped a quarter into a slot machine to whales looking to play high-stakes table games for hours. When planning a new casino, designers take the approach of segmenting all the possible customers they might attract and trying to create a design that works for all types of players. For example, a casino may identify three primary customers, high rollers who want to bypass slot machines and other distractions, casual gamers passing by on the street or looking primarily to play and enjoy the slots, hotel guests who frequently pass through the casino on the way to their room. And so, the casino has to feed itself for the needs of all these players so they don't take their business and money elsewhere. All these variables are taken into account, including what's visible above the level of the banks of slot machines, where crowds tend to gather, ambient noise, and even the aromas in the casino. Even the tiny details matter. Here is something interesting. Studies have found that women are more comfortable gambling where crowds are smaller. One theory suggests that they tend to feel nervous while playing if they think they're being watched. Well, designers map out the routes that each of these types of players might take as they move through the floor. From the high rollers who walk towards the poker room to the hotel guests making their way to the elevators. Everything is planned and thought of, nothing is left to chance. That map is then tweaked to create the maximum amount of appeal for each customer. The hotel guests may encounter a variety of game types showcasing what the casino has to offer or the casual gamer of the street quickly encounters the flashiest slots without having to walk very far. All this leads to the second major step of the layout process. How to design a floor that entices customers to keep entering into the casino and keep them inside for long hours. The maze becomes a reality. In the 1990s and early 2000s, Las Vegas was experiencing its time of renaissance as massive gambling palaces were being opened on the strip, casino designers widely adopted a theory known as the maze layout. The idea behind the maze theory was that a casino should quickly suck a player in and then make it incredibly difficult for him to leave. The maze concept was widely adopted and rapidly entered into the mythology of Vegas pop culture. This is why there are no clocks on the walls and no windows in casinos, and now you know why, in order to keep the player confused about the time and keep him in the casino for a longer period of time. You can clearly see the maze layout working at its best on the floor itself, with the slot machines arranged not in neat rows as they were back in the 1960s, but rather in haphazard curving arcs. That means that a player that entered that section of the casino would have to spend several minutes winding his way out, hopefully deciding to play this slot machine some more along the way. The ideas of the maze 
but if the exits are hidden for spare signage and that, no matter where a player is standing, he should see a variety of gaming machines or tables. The maze turns into a playground. As 2010 was approaching, Casino Leo Theory got its first major revision in decades thanks to the opening of higher end establishments like the Bellagio and the Wine. The low ceilings were raised to the sky, often with sky literally painted on them, and the maze was scraped in favor of smaller groups of machines with more open space around them. When a player came through the door, he no longer saw slots, he saw sculptures and sunlight wide avenues leading to the gaming tables. This new concept has become known as the playground, with the idea behind to turn the casino from a place of confusion, hence the maze, into a high-end palace where players could feel comfortable and excited, surrounded by opulence in every direction, hence the playground. The casino evolved into an inviting spa experience, a kind of place where you don't mind spending money even if you know the odds aren't really in your favor. The new concept and playground design has proven incredibly successful at encouraging players to gamble and designers have learned some powerful psychological lessons along the way. Players who are more at ease are happier when they win and they're more understanding when they lose. This in turn convinces them to bet more. Slot Machine Layouts Probably the most important aspect of any casino layout today involves the slot machines. In the 1970s, Slots earned about 40% of casino floor revenues. However, today they earn the casino up to 71%. In most casinos, slots now outnumber table games by well over 10 to 1 because they are fun, easy to play, and you can earn a lot of money depending on the slots without thinking too much about odds, math, or strategy. The advancement of slot machines, including the invention of touchscreen slots, have driven more and more people to play them and thus earn a lot more money for the casino. Designers started creating a wild array of team slot machines, often following along pop culture lines. Today, the casino no longer needs and you won't find 300 identical machines. Now, it can have 5 or 7 units selected from dozens of different types of machines. This gives the player vastly more variety and the willingness to stick around and play different types of casino games. Psychology is simple. If one slot machine doesn't pay off, Maybe a different one, the different theme game, will. Variety in turn lets casino designers arrange machines in smaller groups. And so, if in the past slot machines were arranged in long rows, today you will find them arranged in small clusters. This cluster design allows players to see a wider variety of games from any vantage point, giving them more choices and more options to spend. Grouping slots has also been found to make playing them more social mimicking table games. Table game layouts. Designers have less flexibility when positioning table games, which are traditionally placed together in the middle of the casino, where they can be centrally managed and secured. Casual gamers are less interested in table games, and regular gamblers will gravitate here anyway, so placement of table games isn't as critical as opposed to slots. Clustering table games in a group does have other advantages though. Table games such as blackjack are often rowdy and noisy, particularly when someone's on a hot streak, and that generates energy and creates a party-like environment. Having this game centrally located allows the energy to spread out, drawing in even more in new players. Also, the experience of gaming itself is contagious. The more people playing at a table, the more likely it is that more people will want to play at that table. Empty tables don't draw in customers nearly full ones do. So, the next time you walk into a casino, you can have a big smile and know why it is designed the way it is. Then, go play responsibly, have fun, and earn a lot of money. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please like it and subscribe. Also, remind you to visit our site to claim great bonuses, take advantage of our promotions, and check out the hottest and best casino games today waiting just for you. Enjoy, have an amazing day.